everyone. Welcome to the Solar and Storage Market Series. My name is Aris Dolev, and I am the Managing Director here at Renvu. Uh, today, we are going to be hearing from Joe uh, Frodsham, Head of Business uh, Development and Customer Success at uh, HomeGrid, and Nick Nelson, Regional uh, Sales Manager at HomeGrid. They will talk about the uh, installation and commissioning of a HomeGrid Stack Series battery. Uh, all participants are eligible for one hour in APSIP certified credit. Uh, but before we dive in and while we're waiting for more people to join, I'd like to give a little background on Renvu as well as some of the products and services we offer. Uh, Renvu is a US-based solar equipment distributor. We have been in the industry since 2012. And we currently have fulfillment facilities in California, New Jersey, and Texas. Uh, all se our sales uh, staff all have background within engineering and solar installation. A few products quickly to spotlight here. We carry the whole solar portfolio and we can beat any price uh, you see out there. We recently had a webinar with Lumen smart panels and we carry the outdoors version uh, of the uh, on the shelf. This is a great device to add to a solar and storage project since it allows you to use the existing main and sub panels and control the loads remotely during power outage or set rules uh, for which loads will continue to work and which ones uh, will be dropped. Uh, it's all based on the uh, the battery state, etc. We have plenty of Zenshine 405 black modules, uh, which we can offer at great pricing and can create special offers with them when purchased with the uh, home grid and solar. We have the whole portfolio of Enphase IQ8 series and offering the IQ8H at 25% below the market price right now. Growat released uh, their EV chargers, uh, which are UL certified and have 50 amp output. And if you're looking uh, for tea gaskets to make solar arrays watertight, uh, Bleak here has several options for different uh, frame gap sizes. Here's our bulk a module price list for large volume options and our upcoming offerings of solar modules. We carry Zenshine, Canadian Solar, Hyundai, Hyperion, and more. All our brands are Bloomberg Tier 1. Uh, we are sharing in the chat a link to this page. Uh, we update it regularly so you can stay up to date with our latest deals and uh, for bulk uh, orders. Uh, I'll take a minute to also mention the Bleaky residential carports. Uh, this is a great way to expand existing solar systems or an alternative solution where you cannot install solar on a roof. And when customer uh, is looking for more uh, added values, it is designed to be assembled by a small uh, crew. It doesn't require any specialized or heavy machinery to install. This is a solar structure, so it is eligible for the 30% ITC and possibly also the extra 10% for US made products. It is, a, it is modules and inverters agnostic, and it is designed and fabricated in the US and made from a US sourced galvanized steel and comes with 25 years warranty. Uh, the structure is coming with a structural engineer P stamp. You can install up to 24 solar modules with four columns of six modules. A two car carports will generate 10 kilowatt uh, of uh, power. So you can use residential and commercial modules with it uh, <clears throat> with load capacities of up to 48 pounds per square foot of snow, 215 miles per hour wind load and seismic design category F. Uh, one last item to go over before we get started is our solar design and flow tool. You will find it at the top of our homepage and on renvu.com. You can generate as many quotes as you need uh, in a couple of minutes without the need to wait for a sales engineer, and it is available 24-7, always updated with the latest products and pricing. And when you're logged in, you will see your prices updated. And at the end, uh, the proposal that you will get will be actually with your pricing. Uh, you will select your components, uh, configure the racking system from a wide range of options, tilted or flat roof, round mount, carports. Um, on the left side, see as I'm making my choices, you can see how pricing is being updated and the bill of material is being uh, changed as I'm making uh, selections here. 
you can see that I'm choosing two rows. First row is 10 modules in portrait, then second row is seven modules in landscape, then another array. I'm changing uh, the the rails to black and the clamps and also the uh, the span to six feet. Uh, then you choose the inverter uh, from types like uh, microinverters, optimizers, and string inverters. I selected string inverters here and storage options. I will select the single phase and Solarc and the Solarc 15K for this system. And then I'll select the home grid 19.2 kilowatt hour battery bank and then the Tygo rapid shutdown for this system. Um, on the next page, you can add a couple spare modules uh, if you need them. And then a balance of system, disconnects, Lumin smart panel, and EV chargers. I'll add here two EV chargers. And then a, at the end, you can save the quote a, on your account and get a quote to your email. After generating the quote, the system will take you to the a, to the quote page under my account, so you can make changes, save as a PDF, or replace a, or place your order. You can also email our sales engineers at info@renvu.com. Our team will review the bill of materials and uh, weigh in with uh, insights uh, on configuration and availability. Uh, we are also available for any questions you may have. Um, okay, if you have any questions about these products or about home grid while Joe and Nika are talking, uh, please feel free to ask in the Q&A section and we will get to the questions at the end of the webinar during the Q&A session. Uh, you can also email our sales team at info at .com for more information and pricing. This webinar is being recorded and we will send you a link in a follow-up email. Uh, we also have recordings of previous ve uh, webinars on the Renvu YouTube channel. As I mentioned, all participants will be eligible for one hour NAPSEP certified credit if you are using uh, someone's else link and want to uh, want the credit, you can uh, email our team uh, after the uh, presentation. Without further ado, I'll head it, hand it over to Joe and Nick. Thank you, Aris. Thank you very much. We are going to share our screen here. Just, just give me one minute. Thank you very much, Erez, and uh, it's good to be here with you today, everybody. My name is Joe Frotschum, um, responsible for business development and customer success here at HomeGrid. I'm accompanied today by Nick Nielsen. Nick, go ahead and you can introduce yourself. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Nick, and I'm a regional sales manager for HomeGrid. I've been with the company a little over three years now. I cover the Northeast and a lot of the West Coast. So great to be here with you today. And... Um, like Eris said, you know, feel free as we're going through to put any questions you have from our presentation in the Q&A. And after we're done with the presentation, we'll go ahead and go through those. Yes, thank you very much. And yeah, please feel free to ask as many questions as you can. We'll have time to go over them and make sure you get your questions answered. As Eris said, um, your participation today will give you one hour of credit, NABSEP credit. So you can uh, you will receive here in the next day or two. Um, once we get your your information and we give you credit for having attended today, you'll receive an email that you can use um, in your NABSET uh, process to get that credit, that one hour of credit. Uh, that'll be your proof of, of attendance, if you will, proof of certification. So without further ado, um, let's go ahead and get started with our home grid installation training. Um, first thing we wanna start off with is a quick home grid overview give you an idea of who HomeGrid is and, and our parent company, Lithion, who they are. And then we'll get into the uh, product overview and then into the installation training itself. So first of all, um, setting the standard. HomeGrid set out uh, several years ago um, to make sure that uh, it covered the, the customer need of a whole home backup, a true whole home backup. 
Um, and that can be installed in less than 30 minutes. And we've achieved that with a very nice form factor. It looks very much like an appliance with a nice display on the front to show you your state of health and your state of charge. And so because of that, to great success in meeting those customer needs with a true whole home backup that's an easy to install, um, Lithion acquired um, HomeGrid about three years ago. And um, Lithion is a leader in the battery industry. They've been in the business of batteries since 1998. Uh, they've been a pioneer with lithium iron phosphate batteries, and they've served a lot of industries, uh, a variety of industries, uh, with mission-critical applications like transportation, uh, military applications, um, medical applications, um, material handling, you know, heavy equipment like uh, large forklifts and, and tugs and so forth. And uh, so we have a, a variety of, of solutions in many industries with lots of different experiences. So Lithion has a lot of good knowledge with BMS's battery management system, software, and chemistry, supporting a lot of different critical applications in a lot of different industries, including home and uh, small commercial and even up to utility size with our large grid box here. Uh, we have grid box backup system as well so lots of different uh, sizes that we can that we can accommodate but today we're focused on the home grid stack series which is this one right here um, which can be used for home and, and some small commercial as well nick can you uh, give us an idea give the audience an idea of uh, our footprint please yeah absolutely so like joe was saying um, home grid is was acquired by lithion uh, lithion is headquartered in canada and calgary uh, HomeGrid itself is home uh, headquartered in Henderson, Nevada, which is uh, basically Las Vegas. We recently just finished our new facility closer to Lake Mead, and we're going to be doing all assembly of our batteries at that facility coming this year. So it will be a fully USA assembled battery uh, in 2024. Um, but we have engineering teams all over the world and, um, you know, sourcing and manufacturing uh, really everywhere. So we really do have a, a global footprint. Thanks, Nick. Getting into our product portfolio, just a quick overview. The home grid fleet really is comprised of three um, at this point, which is our stack series, uh, low voltage, which is a 48 volt battery. And we'll get into the details of that in a minute. And then we have a what we call the HV BMS, which is a higher voltage. It's anywhere from 260 to 400 volt adjustable output using the same modules as the low voltage, but just with a, a higher voltage set of BMS. And then we have what we call the HD cube, which is basically a, an outdoor cabinet, if you will, that's temperature controlled, both heating and cooling, uh, IP65 rated. And so you can actually store up to four of these stacks, uh, eight modules high in each of these cubes. And uh, we'll get into those specifics more. But each cube, you can have up to 153 kilowatt hours of capacity. So that's a quick overview, but we'll get into the details here in the following slides. Nick, you want to give them this uh, stack series overview? Yeah. So um, this is the product that we're most famous for. It's our bread and butter flagship product. Um, it's a stackable battery. It's called the stack series. Um, it uses lithium iron phosphate as the chemistry inside of the, the modules. Each module itself is 4.8 kilowatt hours. You can start with a minimum of two modules and you can go eight high in a single stack, getting you 38.4 kilowatt hours total. You can run 15 eight stacks in parallel, getting you over half a megawatt of storage capability. Um, what we really our claim to fame is the four module stack. Out of four modules, we can push 14.4 kilowatts continuous or 300 amps DC. So like Joe was saying at the beginning, you know, we are a single product that can back up more of a home than really any other product on the market. We can also surge for uh, 10 seconds at 24 kilowatts continuous or 500 amps. So we can dark start a lot of the big loads like air conditioners, well pumps, pool pumps. Um, you won't need a dark start or sorry, a, a soft start system for those things. So that will bring your install costs down. Um, we have a Lego-like form factor. So there's a male, female plug on the bottom and top of each of the modules. 
and they literally just stack on top of themselves like Legos. Very simple install time, uh, very, very simple install and quick install time, you know, less than an hour, 30 minutes. It's easy to upgrade too. So if you're looking at this battery, the two gray pieces, those come in a box. The bottom is the base. The top is the BMS or the battery management system. To upgrade, all you have to do, as long as you aren't at eight step, eight modules, pop off that, that BMS, stack on some more modules, recommission, and you have just upgraded your battery storage in you know less than 30 minutes. You're not looking for more wall space. You're just stacking vertically in the footprint that you already have. So uh, some other cool things about our batteries that I'm not aware of any other company doing currently is our heated modules. So it's the same size and shape as the regular modules, but it has a heating strip inside of the module itself. So lithium iron phosphate has temperature parameters that it operates within. It cannot take a charge if the ambient temperature inside of the battery is less than freezing. So zero C or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. What our heating modules do is they will kick on automatically when the inside temperature of that module hits 33.8 degrees or one C and it will warm up to five C or 42 degrees Fahrenheit so that the battery can take a charge when it's ready to charge, allowing it to continue to function in cold weather. Um, it prioritizes its loads. It can take um, energy from solar, the grid, um, and generator first before it becomes a parasitic load. So it can actually pull energy from itself to power those heating strips. And then, you know, once, once it is charging, electricity is moving, which generates heat, which will allow it to, you know, operate in those optimal temperature parameters. So this is a great product. And um, again, it fits in just like the regular modules. So it, it, it can technically be mixed and matched with the regular. If you wanted to do a heated at the bottom for some reason and do regulars all above, that's great. Heat doesn't uh, dissipate from it. So it's not like a fire where the bottom module is gonna heat up all the stacks above it. It's just gonna warm that one, but some people like to do that in like a garage or somewhere close to concrete because it is colder there. But and we see a lot of people using these even in not necessarily super cold climates, just so that they don't have to ever run into those um, potential cold, cold temperature um, climates or situations where maybe the battery wouldn't be working. Thanks. Talk about it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, keep going. There. Yeah. Um, I was. Uh, yeah. So this is our high voltage BMS. So this is a new product. Um, and it it utilizes the same. 4.8 kilowatt hour modules. The only difference is that the BMS um, is a higher voltage. So you, it's programmable from 260 to 400 volts. It's a default setting of 380 volts nominal. Again, you can run um, 15, eight stacks of these in parallel. And what this product does is it allows us to pair with higher voltage inverters. Um, Solark is a is an inverter we pair really well with because we have such high output. Solark has higher output inverters, so we like pairing with them. Solark has a 30 kilowatt inverter, which is a native 208 volt three phase inverter. So with that inverter paired with this battery, it makes it a very easy install for uh, situations or clients that need a higher voltage system with three phase. Um, and then it is expandable, so we can really customize the the um, amount of storage that that person needs. So this is great for small, commercial, large, residential. Also, we pair with the Solus S6 inverters. So this is a residential inverter, and with that, you know, you can be more price competitive with our high voltage BMS and that Solus inverter. And the, the key differences really between our high voltage and the um, 48 volt inverter is that the high voltage has a circuit breaker to protect it from overcurrent, whereas the um, regular 48 volt BMS has a inline fuse. So if you ever do have an oversurge, you know, that, that breaker is convenient. 
Also, there's just a single point um, of contact for the battery cables to go into the inverter on our high voltage VMS, whereas in our uh, lower voltage one, we do have a bus bar that you connect to both positive and negative cables. So a similar install, even though, you know, the other one is still really simple. Yeah, thank you, Nick. So on the HG Cube, I'll take this one. Um, this is that outdoor cabinet, basically, that we were talking about, kind of a small shed, um, but it's a really well-built, durable, um, IP65 rated, and it uh, heats and cools to keep the, the batteries at the optimal temperature for the well, optimal performance. And so the output... If you have, you can actually put up to three 15K Solarks mounted, shown here on, on one side, and on the back, you can mount two additional. Um, and then, or on the other side, actually. And so that would be three uh, 15K inverters uh, that would give you a total of 45 kin kilowatt continuous. We also are adapting this going forward for the 30K Solar and the 60K Solar. And so that will become available as well. But it can surge up to, in this scenario, where you have these 15Ks, these three 15Ks, you can surge up to 54 kilowatt for 10 seconds. And it has a storage capacity in terms of battery capacity up to 153.6 kilowatt hours per cube. That's because, as I said before, you can put up to four stacks of our stacked series batteries, um, eight, eight modules high. And so if you do the math on those four stacks of eight, that's 153.6 kilowatt hours, and it can be used with either the low voltage or the high voltage BMS that Nick just reviewed with. Um, so let's talk sure, about- can I, just, can I just say one thing about that too? I, I wanted to just touch on this part again. The really the really cool thing about the, the HG cube is that everything on the DC side is supplied and dropped on site. So, you know, when, when you are, working on a project that requires large amount of storage or there's no space in the house or a large residential project or a small commercial project. Um, this is a great solution. It's dropped on site. Everything, we actually wire this thing up and um, supply everything on the DC side. So it's gonna save installers days of labor and also time sourcing all the material to hook these things up. So basically it all ships together on a flatbed you just stack it up, plug the batteries in, and you're good to go. And then you hook up the AC side of things. So it really is um, a great product. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Nick. That is a great benefit for sure. One thing, too, to also mention is that you can parallel up to two of these. So if 153 is not enough. Two of them will give you a, a 307. So that'll, that'll help you um, with that capacity as well. Um. So let's get into some of the performance comparisons. Um, Nick, do you want to talk about this slide here? Yeah, so this needs to be updated. There are some new products out, but we are an industry leader and we still are an industry leader in output. Uh, like I was mentioning before, our claim to fame is that 14.4 kilowatts continuous, 300 amps DC, and we can surge for 24 kilowatts for 10 seconds. So really massive output in a really small package. And we also, um, as mentioned before, we use that lithium iron phosphate. Two of the most popular chemistries you hear on the uh, home storage side under the lithium ion umbrella are lithium iron phosphate and nickel manganese cobalt or NMC. Lithium iron phosphate has a longer lifespan. It's very safe, very little risk for thermal runaway, and there's no cycle-based degradation. The Really the only downside to LFP is that it's a little bit heavy. It's basically like a gold gym weight rack, just a chunk of iron. But the great thing about our battery is that we are modular. So you can take our battery in pieces wherever you're going to be installing it. So it can go upstairs, downstairs. Um, you're not hauling around a solid unit. So it's easier to install. And also it makes it um, the perfect chemistry for home storage because you're not picking it up every day. It stays in the home, in the garage or in the shed and uh, you don't have to move it ever. And we've, we've used lithium iron phosphate uh, from the beginning. And we have some engineers on our team that actually helped pioneer the commercialization of uh, lithium iron phosphate. So, yeah, thank you. 
really strong and stable chemistry and safe and long lasting. So one uh, Nick talked about this a little bit, this adaptable. Really, there's three words to really remember about powerful, adaptable, and easy. And this is the adaptable piece. It's easy to upgrade and flexible capacity. So depending on your circumstances, you can do any any of these variations. And then as Nick mentioned earlier, you can start maybe with a three stack or a four stack and later a year from now, two years, whatever, you can come in easily, add another module because of the label like form factor. And then in a matter of 30 minutes, you can uh, upgrade it to a five stack or a six stack, okay? So these capacities, um, you'll see that with a two stack, because each module is a 4.8 kilowatt hour capacity, 4.8 times two is 9.6, uh, times three is 14.4 kilowatt hours, times four is 19.2 and so forth. Um, with the continuous power, it will increase for the first um, three here, it'll go from an 8.6 kilowatt hour for this size of the stack. I'm sorry, 8.6 kilowatts for this size of the stack, 12.9 kilowatts continuous power for a three stack, and then 14.4 kilowatts is where it hits its max, and this is going to stay at 14.4 across the board all the way up through an eight stack. And then you can see the peak power also increases and then stabilizes here at 24 across the four through an eight step. So really flexible and you can add on later if you need to. The other thing about that too is we run our batteries in parallel. So if a module were to ever go bad, we have a very, very low RMA rate. I think it's less than a percent. Um, I think it might even be less than half a percent, but if a module were to go down in an off chance, they're running parallel. So the battery stack is gonna continue to function. So if a homeowner has a four stack, loses a module, it will function like a three stack until we can get that replacement out. We have plenty of inventory in our um, warehouse in Las Vegas. Um, Renvu can get you a replacement very quickly, um, but we can we can help you through that process. But again, a homeowner is not gonna be out of power. It's not gonna shut the entire system down. It's gonna continue to function until we get that replacement out. And again, we can get it to homeowner in less than two weeks. Great point, Nick. Thank you for bringing that up. As far as a comparison chart, here's some key factors to consider. Capacity, which is how large you know, is your battery. Power, how much can it discharge at a given rate, in a continuous or a surge point talked about. Is it scalable? How much can you stack together? How big can you become from a capacity standpoint? The chemistry, which Nick's talked about, the LFP versus the NMC, and the modularity. Um, and so if you look at the home grid stack series on these factors versus some of the competition, um, you'll see that we we exceed them um, and we have the safer chemistry, more stable chemistry, um, and we can just go really high up into 576 kilowatt hours total scalability, which is the equivalent of 15 eight stacks. So that would give you the 576 kilowatt hour max. Um, uh, the power, as we mentioned on the previous slide, depending on how many modules you have in each stack, can be anywhere from 8.6 to 14.4 kilowatts. Where if you look at some of these others, they're much lower. Now, to the next point, we have had some new entrants into the market, like Tesla Powerwall 3. We need to update this chart. Uh, but even then, their Powerwall 3 is 11.5 kilowatt. So still falls short of the 14.4 kilowatt that we've had from the beginning and, and continue to have. Um, so anyway, just a, just a little bit of a comparison for, for you to consider. Uh, so you can see that we really win on capacity, power, scalability, chemistry, and modularity. Anything you'd like to add to that, Nick? No, I think you touched it really well. Thank you. As far as the warranty goes, this is another thing we're really proud of because we are very clear. We like to be very transparent with our warranty. We don't do it in terms of cycles like most of the industry does, simply for the reason that a cycle is not defined as the same thing across the board. Uh, some people define a cycle of 50% dis discharge, 70% discharge, or whatever. It can change over time. But So we go with something that the definition doesn't change, which is a megawatt hour. The definition of a megawatt hour is not going to change. And so we warranty it for 10 years for each module or for 14.11 megawatt hours of total throughput through the module slide. Again, this is per module. So 14.11 megawatt hours of throughput is equivalent, if you take a 4.8 kilowatt 
uh, hour module. Uh, over the course of 10 years, if you were to discharge that module every day, down 80% depth of discharge, every day for 10 years, it equals 14.11 megawatt hours of throughput. So very straightforward, 10 years or this amount of throughput. And the warranty ensures that it, it will have at least 60% state of charge from its original capacity after 10 years or after 14.11 megawatt hours of throughput. And then details of the warranty can be found on the website. Anything, Nick, that you would add? No, we're just like, um, we're just trying to be as um, clear and transparent as possible. That's our goal. Uh, cycles can really get convoluted. So this is actually measurable. A homeowner will know what they've pushed through the BMS and they'll know how much they have left on their warranty. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Also, when you're adding, just one more point, just thought of this. When you're adding a stack, like we had talked about, upgrading a system, each module, the warranty starts at the date of installation. So if you were to add a module two years down the road, that new module starts at the date of installation, so it would have 10 years. The rest of the stack would have eight years left. Great point, Nick. Thank you for bringing that up. Installation. So now let's go into the installation section. And to start off with, um, available on our website, www.homegridenergy.com, there's um, some resources there. Uh, lots of different resources. One of those is these videos for stacked series installation, a single stack installation or a parallel, meaning two, three, or up to 15 stacks of parallel installation. This video you can refer back to uh, after this webinar. Um, you can come back to our website and it'll, it'll show you step-by-step -step in the video. And you can also find it on YouTube as well. You just do a search for home grid installation. So those are there for your, your reference. Um, today, we're gonna start by defining the components of our stack because we'll refer to these uh, throughout our training. So you have reference, this is obviously the stack, all things together. Uh, we start out, the bottom is the base stand, as Nick referred to before. The base stand, then we have the modules in the middle. Uh, each module will have side panels, on, left and right side panels that are removable. Um, so you can access the dip switches and the power breaker and the so forth. And, and, and so this is the, these are the modules. And then you have at the very top, you have the battery management system of BMS, which we've referred to before. So now with those terms defined, um, let's get into basically the first step is basically unboxing and setup. This is very basic, obviously, but you always want to make sure that you have the full contents of what you should have. And also make sure that you're following the guidelines in the manual to make sure everything's done safe in a safe manner. Uh, in the box, I won't go through each one of these things, but here's your list of things and how many of them you should have in the box. And that's also described in the manual, what you should have. Um, all equipment should be, uh, must be stored in a dry place. Uh, the, the, the packaging is not waterproof, even though you have a plastic bag inside, protect it. it does not guarantee that it will uh, keep out the weather. In fact, we've had some customers who have made that mistake and, this has become full of water because being left out in the rain for days and days. So make sure you place it in a store and a dry place. Um, and then unpack everything and verify that you have everything you need and familiar, so familiarize yourself with the manual and then you can get started and move on to stack two or step, step two, which is simply stack it up, unbox it. You first of all, place the base and make sure you put it in, in the place that you want, because once you get the stack on top of it, it's going to become heavier to move. Not that you can't move it, but it just becomes more difficult. So try to get it in the location that you'd like it. Um, and then remove the terminal dust guard from each of the modules. Each of these modules that you stack, this little inner connection, this is where the electrical connections happen automatically when you stack one module to the other. There's a little dust guard on that. But you got to make sure you remove it as you stack them. Um, and then... Uh, and remove the side panels. You can see these side panels here are present, but down here, they're removed. So as you go up, it's module by module, place it and remove the side panels. So that then you can access it, uh, and we'll get into those steps here in the following slides where you need to access those. So that's really the simple start. And then, um, Nick, you wanna take them through addressing the modules? Absolutely. So this is really probably the only unintuitive part of our install. Um, and the reason why is because this is in binary.
But again, after you've done two or three of these installs, you probably won't even have to look at the manual anymore. It's so simple. Um, so you're going to address the modules now so that the BMS knows where those modules are in a stack. So for module one, dip switch one is up, all the rest are down. For module two, dip switch one is down, two is up and all the rest are down and so on. You can see um, in the picture, you'll wanna use a small tool to get to those dip switches like a flat screwdriver, um, just so that you can, you know, move those dip switches up and down. Well, this is how it looks stacked up. So you're gonna have the master BMS with its uh, dip switch one up and all the rest down. And then um, it is easier to start from bottom to top because of the adding later down the road. So you can start from one and go down to eight, but if you start from, um, one at the bottom, two, three, four, five going up, then when you add a new module, all you have to do is reset the dip switch for that top module instead of, going, instead of going through all the modules and redoing the dip switches. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please put it in the Q and A. But yeah, we, we would recommend going from bottom up. So now we're gonna put the BMS in detection mode. And the way we do that is in, there, there's three boxes and you can see the picture of it below These, this illustration. You have the inverter set, the address set, and the impet set. So in the inverter set section, we're gonna put all the dip switches in the up position. And by doing so, it allows the BMS to detect how many modules are in the, or underneath it really. Then the address set, because this is, um, you know, stack number one, we're going to have one up. And then in pet set, you're going to have six up, all the rest down. This is all in our manual as well. And, um, you know, when you're going through your first install, feel free to reach out to our tech support team or to your local regional sales manager, and they can help direct you through this install. But like I said, once you get two or three of these under your belt, it's going to be so simple. You probably won't even have to look at the manual, but we do recommend watching the videos and reading the manual every time you go to an install. Now we're in detection mode. You're gonna turn on each individual module. You're gonna start from the bottom module and work your way up. And when you turn on the module, the individual module itself, there's gonna be a green light that appears inside the module as seen in that picture on the bottom left. And then you'll wait about 30 seconds um, after each module to turn on the next. And then you're gonna turn on the BMS. There's gonna be some clicking sounds and then this display is gonna be shown. 63 and then the number of modules in the stack. Sometimes it takes a minute to detect and sometimes initially it will display a different number than you have. So maybe it will say two or three when you have a four stack. It can take sometimes up to three minutes to detect all the modules. So just be patient and wait and it will if you input all the correct dip switches in the modules, it will display how many modules are in that stack. Thank you, Nick. One thing I just highlight, a lot of people wonder, what does the 63 mean? Is it like percent charged or anything like that? No, it's simply that we're in detection mode. 63 is the code that corresponds to detection mode. That's all that 63 is. So once we've done that, this is a parallel install. So like we were saying, we can stack, we can do 15 eight stacks in parallel. So when you're running multiple stacks in parallel, you're gonna do the detection mode on each individual stack. Then you're gonna turn the BMSs off and then you're gonna attach a RJ45 cable that comes with each BMS and base. And what you're going to do is you're going to daisy chain um, from link A to link B from the master to the secondary um, BMS. And then from the secondary, if there was another, you'd go link A from the second into link B on the third and so on in sequence. Now, this is the address set is going to be where you put um, what stack number it is. So the master BMS is going to be one up 
Stack number two is going to be, it's the same thing as the modules. Stack number two in the address section is going to be one down, two up, three and four, five and six are all down, and then so on. And you're just going to follow that same binary code for the address set sections. Um, for, for the um, BMS, so we're going to now do a detection mode for all the different BMSs. So you're going to put, this is only for parallel, you put one down and all the rest remain up. And it's very similar to how we did the detection mode for the modules. We're going to start with the BMS furthest from the master. And we're going to turn that on. And then we're going to wait 30 seconds. And then we'll turn on the next stack and the next stack until we get to the master BMS. Then that master BMS, like Joe was saying, the detection mode for multiple stacks is code 62. And then that big number below is telling you how many stacks are run in parallel. So in this case, there are two battery stacks running in parallel. Now we're gonna change the inverter set section from detection mode to the proper inverter setting on the master BMS. So if you're running in open loop with a Solark, uh, Schneider XW Pro, Sunny Island SMA, Lux Power. Um, there are some others. If you do want to run our battery with a different inverter that's not on the list, please reach out to us and we can get you those info, get you that info. Uh, my tech support team can also walk you through that. But um, basically what you're going to do is change the inverter set section to the corresponding inverter that you're using. And then once that's done, you're going to power the BMS back on and it will run as normal. So the part so, of the people, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the cable installation and management for, like I was mentioning before on our 48 volt um, BMSs, you will have these bus bars and you're gonna connect the cabling to those bus bars. The positive, Cabling will go on the top of the bus bar and the negative cable will go on the bottom of the negative. That just allows for the battery cables to easily move out of the back gaskets, um, allowing you uh, to easily install this. You're gonna fasten these bolts to um, 12 Newton meters plus or minus 1.2. And I believe it's 106 inch pounds. Um, then you'll reattach the cover. Oh, also you'll want to, um, run the, um, we, our, our, uh, BMS has come with a pre-wired cable, which is six feet long and it's pre-wired for a solar inverter. So it plugs into that, um, INV can bus port and that's inverter. So you're going to plug, it's actually pre-labeled as well for ease of install. So you plug the battery side into the inverter can, and then the other side, which is labeled inverter, plugs into the Solark. If you need a longer than uh, six foot cable, then we have the pinout instructions uh, for, for a Solark. Um, we also now have a Wi-Fi cable that attaches to the BMS. So we no longer need an external component, which was called the Skybox. Um, and you're able to connect our batteries to Wi-Fi from from that antenna. So basically just to download, you'll want to download the app and contact our tech support team to set that all up. Some additional install features. The base has some hollow um, points in the bottom, which allows you to bolt the base to concrete or whatever it's on to allow it to be more stable for seismic purposes. We also, if you're looking at the battery, the right side panel is what you remove to get the, the dip switches and the on off switch. The left side, you can remove those to actually bracket it together. So you can make it a solid unit, again, for seismic purposes, allowing it to be more stable. And then we also have a wall anchor, which attaches to the BMS, which allows it uh, or prevents it from tipping, basically. So that all, all those pieces, the, the brackets actually come in the module boxes, but the um, wall mounting 
comes the wall mounting brackets come in the BMS base box. Do you want to talk about our app, Joe? Sure. Yeah. So um, connect to the Wi-Fi uh, and the app. So first of all, you want to download the app, and we have both iOS and Android available. Um, and you'll need to create an account. To create that account, um, call in to our technical support. You just need to do this initially. Following you, you know, your first installation, the other one you already have the app and you've already an account, a master account to install it. But you'll initially need to have that tech support help you. So if you, I would recommend like even today, just calling tech support and getting the account set up, calling this number, they can help you get your your app set up, and then you'll have it ready to go. Um, there, there's also you know, there's a homeowner's version and there's an installer's version. Basically, it's the same app, it's just different uh, accessibility depending on your your category, with the installer. And it really just gives you, as an installer, a little bit more insight into inside of the battery, uh, voltages and amps and so forth, and a history of that stuff, so you can kind of see what's going on there. For a homeowner, it'll show you state of charge and, and state of health. State of health being how much of the original capacity is still left over time. Um, make sure you have uh, Gen uh, 2, 3, and 2.4 gigahertz for Wi-Fi. This is for our, for our generation home grid, generation 2 or generation 3. Generation 2 um, requires a skybox because we don't have this Wi-Fi port. Generation three has a Wi-Fi port. I really don't think there's any more generations two out there because it's been over a year and a half since we've had them in our warehouse. But there could be some out there that you want to come across. If you do for Wi-Fi, you're going to need a skybox, which we ship out uh, without charge. But most of them are going to have this Wi-Fi port. Um, anyway, so you set your password and then you just follow the steps on the on the on the app to get you set up. Close and reopen it, and then you'll. Be able to have refreshes for up, for any updates that we might. Okay. And also to add on that, um, like Joe was saying, it we recommend you guys getting this all set up and installed on your phone before you go out to a site or to an install, just because you know there may be uh, service problems or you can't connect connect with our tech support team. We just don't. We want you to be ready to go when you get there. So you know, like. Joe was saying, you know, even right now you could set that up and so that you're ready to go. But really, um, just to touch on that installer um, side, you know, with the installer facing app, you can see all the batteries that you've deployed in the field. So if a customer does have a problem, you can log in, diagnose the issue. You're not going to have to go on site and figure out what you need and then leave and come back. You know, you can figure out what it is. If you can't diagnose it, our tech support team in Las Vegas can look at the battery, let you know what the problem is, get you all the tools and info you need so that when you're on site, you're not diagnosing, you're just fixing and you're in and out, saving you, you know, time and money and really preventing multiple truck rolls. So that's uh, really exciting. We're happy about that. Yeah, great points, Nick. Thank you for adding um, I can keep going. So once you once you're done with the install, you're just going to reattach those side panels. We have a latching system now. It was a, a screw um, system. So again, helping with the ease of install. But you're going to just reattach the side panels to the both the BMS and the modules. And then just again, cable management. Make sure that it's all safe and looking good. Um, we do recommend you using the battery daily. And not letting it sit there, especially when you first install it. We recommend cycling it at least two to three times in the first week. The reason why is because each individual module will have a different state of charge. And so by charging and discharging the battery, it allows it to calibrate and balance all the modules to be at the same level. So it'll function properly. So if you discharge it as low as possible, you know, down to 20% state of charge and then refilling it back all the way up to 100%. Uh, that's that's really important so that the battery is functioning properly. And then also when we are running multiple battery stacks, we want all the stacks to be the same height. So two, two stacks, three, four stacks. Think of it like all of them draining evenly and equally. And if you have one that's uh, taller, you know, you will not be able to drain 
potentially a full module. So just think of it that way. It makes it easy for me to understand. All the stacks should be the same same uh, size, and then just make sure that you're you're using these batteries uh, as much as possible. That's really our goal. You know, we we don't want these to be used like generators. They can be, you know, they can sit there, but really if you're using these every day, that's when you're gonna get a quicker ROI and really be able to utilize the large investment that you're putting into your solar and batteries. Yes, very good, thank you, Nick. Some additional details, just to kind of sum things up, go through here pretty quickly, is we have uh, what we call Y-shaped bus bars, and these are specifically available for um, Solark 15K, because the Solark 15K has two landing ports for positive and two for negative. And so these Y-shaped bus bars basically turn that two into a single so that our single cable can attach uh, in, in one location, make it easier to install. Plus it makes, the, you, you can access the full power of the solar grid. So you split it like that, um, to land on just one or the other, you're not going to get the full power. So these are very um, helpful in terms of ease of install plus performance of the solar. Mm -hmm. So then um, as far as insulation, ensure that you have the correct polarity for sure. You know, make sure you're not crossing polarities, obviously. And then wiring for uh, copper or aluminum wiring. Uh, if you need a more flexible solution, oftentimes welder's cable can be used, but you need to make sure you always get approval from your local page to get. Um, always power down the system before making connections. Uh, parallel only, adding a common bus bar. So here's some things, uh, just from a bus bar standpoint, how you put two, how you wire it so that you have, a, in this case, two batteries with one, or two stacks with one inverter. You would have a positive and a negative bus bar right here. All the positives from the battery come in to the positive bus bar. And then you'd have one coming from the positive bus bar into the inverter. And the negative is the same thing, two from the battery and then one into the inverter. For a parallel inverter and parallel battery scenario, it's the same type of thing. All the positives from the battery go on to the positive bus bar, and all the positives associated with the inverters also go into that positive bus bar. And same thing for the negative. So fairly simple. Um, we would recommend that you always make sure you have a, high, a highly rated bus bar. Um, always overshoot them. You know, we recommend at least 300 amps per inverter. I even tell people to go to 600 amps to make double short in case you want to add another stack later or more. Well, the inverter, you don't have to replace the bus bar. And they're not that much more expensive and just make them convenient for the future. And then we have a home grid and solar settings guide that's available online. Um, really, Obviously, there's a lot of detail here, but it's really simple on two pages to get set up. The, everything happens automatically, pretty much, in terms of these settings when you connect the, the solar and the home grid and batteries. The one thing you will need to do is on the battery tab here and the battery setup uh, screen is make sure you have the correct battery capacity entered into manual. Now, that'll all obviously depend upon how many modules in your stack and how many stacks you have. So it's just the total battery kilowatt hour capacity. So for a four stack, for example, it'd be 19.2 kilowatt hours. And then your max charge and discharge, you want to set that to 275 um, on these two settings. Here's the comms cable that Nick was referring to earlier that shipped with our batteries. There's a six foot cable that comes already pinned out for a solar. If you need a longer one, um, you can pin up yourself and do this. Make sure that your brown is on the seven and that you are on this is the battery side, and then that your white and brown is on the eight. And on the inverter side of the cable, the brown goes to four, and the white and brown goes to five. That's it's that simple. Nothing else. If you have more colors of wire inside of your cable, you don't need more than the brown. The brown. Everything else can just be blank. It'll be fine. As far as the Gen 2 versus Gen 3, as I said before, uh, we shouldn't really have many Gen 2s in warehouses in the supply chain. But this is the skybox we were referring to. If you do have a Gen 2 that plugs in like this, and this creates a Wi-Fi capability for the Gen 2, this box doesn't reside on here. Obviously, when you connect it, you can tuck it inside with the rest of your components and put the panel back on. It's hidden, so you're not going to see it once it's installed. 
but that is how you make it so it's Wi-Fi capable if you're a Gen 2. If you're Gen 3, it comes already in the established inside with the Wi-Fi port right here that you just screw into. As far as state of charge parameters, do not put batteries into storage at less than 60% state of charge. Uh, batteries in storage need to be charged back to 60% every six months or so. If the battery is at 0% for 12 hours, then it needs to be charged to 5% or more to resume, resume its normal operation. So sometimes that does happen if it kind of goes to zero, somebody neglects it for a while, and it just sits there for a while. Yeah, it's not going to work when you charge it back to 5% and then it'll have to wake up and, and perform the normal. As far as our support goes, um, we talked about the, the app. We'll go ahead and get that installed today. I'd encourage you to do that so it's ready to go for you by simply calling 855-753-3505. Go to the um, Google Play or App Store and download the app. Um, and then you can get an account set up by calling our tech support line and you'll be ready to go. Here's some of our partners. Um, you know, we have several Inverter partners. We also have uh, financing partners, and load shed partners, like Lumen and so forth. Um, so we, we are continually adding to this list. If you have any questions about whether or not someone that you are thinking about uh, using with our product, uh, there's a good chance that we maybe added them recently or we will in the, in the near future. But here's the current list right now. Um, so if you, you uh, want to take a screenshot of that, that's great. But uh, call in, you can also get the uh, more updates from our tech support team. Here's just a couple of photographs of some installations, a uh, variety of different uh, ways of doing it, just to give you a couple of ideas. Um, here's a small stack in a cabin. Uh, we recommend always making sure that if you do want to grow, don't don't limit yourself by how you install it. Uh, this might be a, a limiting factor if you did it this way, it'd be hard to maybe add another one. Um, so we re really recommend putting them to the side if you can. Um, it, like in this case, these can be added to without any, in, anything inhibiting the growth vertically, um, as you need to add more. Um, and here's, you know, a couple of these, uh, just so large on the side here, and then, and then three, uh, stacks of our hundred stacks here. So it looks really nice and clean and compact. Um, and, and then if you look at this one, here's, here's this HD cube as an example out here in the middle of the weather. And it can be self-sustaining, self-heating, self-cooling, and and wind, wind proof, uh, IP65 rating. Here's some of our compacts now on the wall. I haven't really gotten into those um, in this presentation, but if you do have an interest in that home grid wall mount, 5.12 kilowatt hour capacity, please give us a call when we talk. Some accessories. Nick, you want to talk through these accessories? Yeah, I'd love to. So we are an IP55 rated battery, which means we are water resistant, but we are not waterproof. Uh, and that water um, rating comes when the battery is stacked up. So like Joe was mentioning, when they're in the box, they're not waterproof or water resistant. So keep them out of the weather for sure before installation. And we want to try and, um, you know, try and keep them out of, you know, really heavy weather, like driving rains, snow built up around them if they do need to go outside. So this is our solution for that. We still don't want them installed in direct sunlight because um, heat and sun really is what, what kills batteries. So this um, outdoor rated case allows you to install our batteries outside. Currently, we have a two to four module size uh, case to store your or house your batteries. If it is taller, you know, some type of an accessory structure, like a three walls and a roof would be great, like an open garage, something like that. But optimally, if you can keep them in a garage or in the home, that's that's the best. Um, again, we have our heated modules and the Y-shaped bus bars, which um, Joe had gone over. For the sake of time, um, we're going to skip over these. I think we've already talked about the detail on the outdoor case. And then, so let's go into review. Um, HomeGridEnergy.com, your cell is a training tool, lots of FAQ there so you can be able to refer to and technical resources like videos and, and uh, specification sheets and certification uh, documents and so forth for you to refer to. So go to HomeGridEnergy.com. You can also sign up for our weekly training if you don't follow me. 
you can register for that training on the page. Oh, you're coming in a little choppy. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and take it from here? But yeah, again, links um, for really anything you need for our manuals, for the install, tutorials can all be found on our website. Again, don't hesitate to ever reach out to us or our tech support team for any questions that you have. Um, and also, yeah, we have our product, product certifications on there, including the UL 9540 and 9540A, plus many more which are necessary for installs in lots of parts of the country now. And here's our tech support email and phone number. And it can also be found under our contacts page on our website. So again, just highlights really quick on that stack series, full home backup, 14.4 kilowatts continuous, 300 amps, 500 amps surge for 10 seconds for modular and design. You know, it's one of the better form factors on the market. And we see a lot of people copying us because it is so good and easy to install. It's customizable capacity and output upgraded in small increments of 4.8 kWh. So we can really hone in what a homeowner or customer is really needing. Best in class chemistry, LFP, lithium iron phosphate, super safe, superior life cycles, very little risk for thermal runaway, super simple install, sub one hour upgrading in less than 30 minutes. And we are a US based support team and we are a going to be a fully USA assembled product here um, very shortly. So now we will open it up to Q&A. And as we're going through these, if you guys have questions, feel free to, to throw them in there. We'd love to talk more about it. Um, so the first one says, I see a lot of literature for home grid uh, from home grid that says do not install the inverter directly over the batteries, but a lot of photos of product installations show inverters installed directly over the batteries. Is this a warranty issue or why is it a problem to install inverters directly over the batteries? So it's not a, it's not a, a, a warranty issue. Typically it's a HJ um, uh, issue. And I don't know if you know the code, Joe, but um, basically it's, it's, whether or not your inspector is going to allow it installed above or if it has to be to the side. Potentially one yeah. problem. Go yeah, it's, exactly right. it's basically a code. So you just talk to your AHJ and it's going to be a matter of code. Yeah. The other thing too is with expandability, if you want to ever upgrade that system and that inverter is directly above the battery, you can't really grow. So that's maybe another situation where you'd want to put it off to the side so you can uh, you know, make your battery stack taller if the homeowner decides they want to increase their storage down the road. Will the heated battery module drain itself to in freezing weather if there is no charge coming in until the BMS shuts down the energy? Um, so if there is no external energy, then, and it does become a parasitic load, it does have a chance to drain itself down. It will shut itself off before it reaches zero but you will have to manually go, manually go in and turn it back on. That's why we typically recommend pairing a generator with our heated, just in the off chance that there is no solar and the grid does go down. You do have something that can charge it. Um, and what you'll wanna do is if it does ever go down to zero to just turn it on when you know that there is solar being produced or you have um, grid energy going. Do you feel like I answered all of that, Joe? Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, has the HV BMS received its UL 9540A listing as of yet? If so, where can I find that statement? And if not, when do you expect that? So yes, we did receive the 9540A for the Solus inverter. Um, UL for the 30K Solar should be coming shortly. Right, Joe? Yes, that's right. As far as the UL 9540A, the A is basically just a battery only test for, for propagation. And so that testing has been done for the battery, how close they can be to each other. Oh, okay. And then the UL 9540 is the one that pairs the battery with Solus or whatever other member. And so the 9540 has been completed for the Solus S6, 11.4 kilowatt. And um, also, here shortly, we'll have it for the 30K Solar and for the 60K so far. 
if possible, is it possible to stack 250 kWh at three phase 208 volt system? Yes. You can use our high voltage battery with, you know, that solar 30k or 60k and it will you know we can get all the way up to 576 kilowatt hours if you needed it so it is absolutely possible are the batteries made in the u.s are they eligible for tax benefits under the ira so they will be fully assembled we're still sourcing our cells from overseas at our manufacturing facility in china um but because they're being assembled here, they will be eligible for the additional tax benefits under IRA. Once we have that, and once we have our facility up and running and it is being you know, assembled here, we will give you guys more information on that. But it is something that is coming up soon and we are very excited about it. Do you have anything to add to that, Joe? No, just, yeah, it's, it's a work in progress. It's not available yet. And it's not currently being assembled, but we are actively building a facility and a, and a assembly line to do that. The target uh, was previously quarter two. I think that has slipped a little bit uh, due to construction, normal construction things, but uh, it'll be probably toward the end of this year. And I've heard it's pretty amazing. It's state of the art, you know, showpiece assembly line with robotic arms, and it's going to be, Awesome. So we're, we, once we get that going, we'll, we'll get some marketing out there and definitely queue in Renvu and we'll you know, let everybody know. Um, we had issues connecting due to 5G network. How do we get Wi-Fi with 5G? Do you know the answer to that, Joe? No, I don't know. I just know that it needs to be 2.5 um, or it was 2.5 2.4. 4, is it? Gigahertz. Okay. Um, yeah, if if you have questions, uh, um, if, if if you're still having issues with that, uh, you can put a follow-up question down below or reach out to our tech support team and they'll be able to help you get that figured out. Thank you. Does the stacked system offer a seismic zone four rating? Um, I'm not aware of the seismic zone ratings. Um, so we'll have to look into that. But with it being anchored and the ability to you know, hook each module together and while, while anchor the BMS, I think uh, you know, it's gonna be pretty good but, but for, for seismic purposes, but I don't know exactly this, this, this specific zone rating. I'm gonna make a note of that. And um, if you don't mind reaching out to your um, sales rep or one of us, either Joe or I, um, you should get our contact info after this. Um, we'll be happy to follow up on that. The I think it says LV, but I think it's the high voltage stack series. What do you recommend for maintenance cycles after initial balancing, particularly for the system that is intended for backup only? Do you want to answer that one, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I would say that it's just good practice to kind of keep the battery active. They, they, they like to be used. Um, and also, you don't want to be in a situation where you thought that you had to charge, but there was something in the system electrically or in, in your installation that drained it or whatever, you weren't aware of it. So I always like to, like, you know, tell customers to, like, keep it actively used. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe once a week. Um, if it's not really active, it's good to kind of just cycle it a little bit. Um, but that's really kind of up to owner. Um, like Nick said earlier, it's not really going to damage the battery, but but it is good practice to keep it active and working. Oh, you're at, yeah. So that's the forty eight volt. Okay, cool. Sorry, I just saw your comment. Um, so yeah, we we um, yeah. What what Joe was saying, we also have those settings in Solar, which is pretty cool. You can um, you know program it to really do whatever. You, you need it to do and when you need it to do it. This the inverter really is the brains of the sol solar system, and it's going to be telling, you know, where the energy is supposed to go and what the battery is supposed to do be doing and when it's supposed to be doing it. So uh, thanks for that question. If you have a follow up, feel free to throw that in down below. How about dark starting a battery module? So it's basically what you'll have to do if if a battery there is some protective precautions in there. So when it shuts off, there is a little bit 
of energy left so that when you turn it on, um, it can take that charge. But if it were to go all the way down to zero and can be completely dead, what you're gonna have to do is rem remove the covering from the module and basically trickle charge it with a uh, 48 volt charger and bring it up to, I believe it's 5% or a certain voltage so that it can start, start taking a charge from solar or the grid or generator. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than just like turning it on. You will have to trickle charge it, but it's a fairly simple process. And again, our tech support team can help you walk through that entire process. I see that you we can connect the BMS to a network via Wi-Fi. To my knowledge, Stack support Stack series supports Ethernet. If so, could you provide a reference indicating the Ether, Ethernet ports location? So right now we're only Wi-Fi um, compatible. We have looked into an Ethernet port, and it may be some type of an external port, similar to a Skybox. We're still kind of trying to figure out the best way to, to do this or you know in the next gen to have a, an ethernet port in the bms um, but right now we're solely wi-fi is there a different app for the homeowner end user download uh downloads than the home grid energy app that the installer has what is the best way to get the homeowner set up with monitoring on their apps so it's not a different app but it is a different facing part of that app so the homeowner won't be able to see, you know, the installer's entire fleet. They'll just be able to see their own battery. Um, the BMS displays a lot of the information that the app will show you. So if you're not in front of the battery, it, it will allow people to see that the battery is functioning. And you can actually go a little bit deeper and see down to the module level, what each module is doing, how much capacity, stuff like that, temperature. So um, it would just be set up differently. You'll want the homeowner, I believe, Joe, if you want to chime into that, you'll, the homeowner will call our tech support or how do they get set up? Yeah, same thing. Uh, they would need to do the same process and, and the tech support, you know, clarify whether they're an installer. Okay. And they can get that sent for. What is the app called? I couldn't find it. Um, we will look at that. I, I believe it's just HomeGrid Energy on the app store. Yeah, I think if you do a search for Hungry Energy, it should work. Yeah, Hungry, um, yeah, it's just Hungry Energy. It's right there on the app store. Uh, just type in Hungry Energy into the search bar. Can your team do diagnostics with shared plant through Solark? I asked you to specific, site specific, non-available Wi-Fi, less than 5G network. Um, so we can do some, we can do some diagnosing, but to get the real details, you'll need to be on site. Unfortunately, um, we'll kind of have an idea of what's going on through the Solarx's um, interface, but uh, really to figure out what the problem is, is you're gonna need to go to the battery in that situation. Thank you. Are there any, are there any supply chain problems? Uh, no, we are not running into any supply chain problems. Another reason why we're bringing assembly over to the U.S. is to prevent any potential supply chain problems. And um, we have plenty of inventory. Brand food can get you product very quickly within uh, less than two weeks. If adding two additional modules to an existing stack would we reconfigure to two five stacks and then reset the dip switches of the original eight for the BMS to re to locate the restack batteries? Yes, that's what you would do. Eight is our maximum. So you'd want to do a new stack, you need a new BMS. And yeah, you'll want them to be the same height. So that's a that's really um, a great question. So re restack it, recommission it, and then you'll just do the parallel. Uh, installation process. And there's videos on how to do that. Again, if you have any questions while you're going through it, feel free to reach out to one of us or our tech support team or your regional sales rep. Good question. I noticed in the installation example picks, 
where three stacks were placed side by side with one uh, inch or two in between. Don't you need to be able to get to the terminals behind the dust guards? Yes, we actually recommend um, leaving about six inches if you can. Um, what you'd have to do in that situation is probably slide it to the side to reach those. So for ease of um, you know access to those points, we do recommend at least six. You know, and then depending on where you're at in the country, um, you may be required to have them three feet apart. Uh, we did our 9540A testing at, uh, I believe it's 100 millimeters or 110, which is a, a little under a foot. It's like 11.75 inches or something like So a, a foot in most cases is what we'll recommend spacing. But again, it's going to depend on where it's being installed, what the inspector suggests and, and what the homeowner is wanting. Um, but yeah, it does make it easier if there's a little bit more space. And um, Howie, I am sorry, I have an iPhone, so I'll have to look into why it's not coming up on the Play Store. But if you are looking for it, um, Home Grid Energy is where I'm seeing it. Um, we can dive into that deeper and, and get back to you. If you want to reach out to one of us individually, we can see if we can find out. I know that um, our website was under construction a little bit yesterday. so. There may be a new version of it coming out. It's not there. Call, call tech support. Maybe they can help as well. Yeah, here's their email and their their number. Maybe after hopping off this, you could just give them a call and see what's going on there. Okay, I think we went through all those. Um, you know, we can wait another ten to fifteen seconds. See if anybody else has any, but. If not, again, thank you, Renvu, for supporting us and putting this webinar together. We really appreciate you guys. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Hope you learned something. Um, and we will give you guys the information. If you're looking for the NAPSA credits, we can, we can send that out to you as well. So again, thank you, guys, and hope you have a great rest of your day. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, Renvu. Joe. Yep. Thank you, guys. Uh, we will send a follow-up email to everybody. Uh, if anybody needs that... Uh, NAPSIP credit, and you're not using your uh, registration, just email us and we will add you uh, to the list. Uh, we'll probably follow up with an uh, email by early next week. Um, thank you for joining us today, and uh, thanks, Joe and Nick, for uh, presenting. Have a good week. Thank you. You too.